Uh, we're going to uh, kick off with a presentation by Aldo Hernandez Porto uh, Carrero, who is from yeah. Nicaragua and doing his PhD with uh, Fran. And the title of his talk is Integrating Reproductive Potential Studies in the Fisheries Management Study, uh, study Case of Females of, and I won't even attempt the species name. Thanks. <clears throat> uh, good morning. Uh, Okay, I will try to, to integrate reproductive potential studies in the fisheries management. And I use a study case, uh, Bricon guatemalensis, which is a fresh water fish inhabiting inland waters from Mexico to Panama. And in the Nicaraguan lake is the second most important commercial species. So now I will I will mention three aspects directly related to this study. One of the aspects is that in a small scale fisheries around the world, uh, uh, fishing gear is the most common used fishing gear for catching fish. And many regulations arise by combining gill net selectivity analysis and lynch admiration. So as a result, we protect the immature component of the stock. But gill nets have been known to select fish on a narrow size range. And the regulation of the mess size prevent to cut fish below that size range. So make it possible, it make it possible to catch fish on a desirable size range because of the high selectivity of the net, of course. But also, we know that fish population are heterogeneous in age, size, sex, pattern of behavior, habitat, and others. Hence, all their members are not equally vulnerable to any given method of fishing. Keeping in mind these three aspects, I will present this study which focus the attention on the female stock of Ricon Guatemalensis collected in the Nicaraguan lake where gillnets are widely scattered. So during my result presentation, I will discuss mainly on two aspects. One of the aspects is the impact of the gillnet selectivity, not only on the size range of the population, but considering the reproductive phase of the stock uh, immature, immature component of the stock. And also, I will remark on some important considerations to be taken into account to fisheries management as reproductive cycles in a temporal scale, reproductive fast and potential fecundity. So this study was developed along the eastern part of the Nicaraguan lake where 47 stations were set and we analyzed gill net selectivity of four main size, uh, and we analyzed the impact in the size range, length, at maturation, reproductive fast, potential fecundity, and also we analyzed the influence of the reproductive cycles in the gill net catches. The size structure of the populations range from 13 to 55 and two main modal lengths were identified, 28 and 37. And from the performed gillnet selectivity analysis, we obtained the relative selectivity curve that you can see there. And we observed that in all mesh size, we catch a, wide, a relative wide size range. So this suggests that all the mesh, all mesh size are uh, highly efficient. But the wider size range are caught and retained in the 100 millimeter mesh size. So <clears throat> we obtained some resulting parameters from this analysis. And I, I will underline the importances of the optimum size. I hope you can see there. I, I don't see any here. Um, this optimum size is referred to the the probability of being catch, which is 100% probability of being catch in each mess size. So 
when we analyze the mean length, in, now we are going to this uh, figure. We analyze the mean length, model length, we can see that these parameters are slightly, slightly differ from the optimum size calculated in, the, in, the, in, in each mesh size. In the smaller mesh size, you can see there is a narrow size range between this length parameter of the population and the optimum size. So this suggests that these sizes are more vulnerable to that net, to this net, which is consistent with Hamley 1975 statement that the mesh size is, the mesh size is proportional to the optimal length of the fish catch by that mesh. And the optimum size are held more firmly into the net. So, but, and we can see in the case of the, the larger mesh size that the model length, mid length are below the optimum size. Again, this, this suggests, I mean, this, this pattern of serving in the larger mesh size indicate that bigger fish are less vulnerable to these two nets, coinciding again with Hamley, 1975, who indicates that as the size depart from the optimal length, the probability of captures lessens. Now we move to what I call the, the first biological parameter to analyze, which is the length admiration. And we observe <clears throat> that the length admiration is almost, is, is 27.3. And this is likely differ with the optimum size uh, uh, estimated or calculated in the smaller mesh size, 75 millimeter mesh size. So this indicate that the more vulnerable part of the population in this net are the immature and the specimens rounding the length at maturation. Therefore, its use for fishing operation should be discouraged, and larger mesh size of the net should be considered. So for now, we recommend to use a larger mesh size that uh, could be, in this case, 100 millimeter mesh size. So, <clears throat> so far, as I uh, said in the introduction, uh, we combine in anabiological parameters with the gillnet selectivity analysis. And now we protect the immature component of the stock. Now uh, I'm going to analyze the influence of the gillnet selectivity in reproductive phases, which, which could be the second biological parameter I'm going to try to integrate in here. As we have seen in the gillnet selectivity with catch catch and retain it, fish um, in, in a function of the mesh size and the body length of the fish. But now we can see here that the proportion of the different reproductive fats also changes. We have here immature developing, spawning capable, actively spawning and regenerating fats. So, <clears throat> and we can see that this proportion decreases from the smaller mesh size to the larger mesh size. But, okay, in the 100, we can see, uh, we, we, we notice that uh, something is going on there. The spawning capable, the spawning capable and actively spawning fast increase a little bit. In the smaller mesh size, we cut and retain fish from all developing fast, uh, uh, reproductive fast, sorry. But the, Immature fats are catching a higher percentage. And in the 100 millimeter mesh size, the spawning capable fats and the active spawning fats are catching in a higher percentage. So we will see now that there is some influence of the reproductive cycle and also some environmental factors. And we are, I'm, I'm going to focus on the spawning capable and active spawning fats. So along the year, we can see that developing fast, this is a blue bar, predominate over the rest of the fast. 
And the spawning season starts in July, which is the red, red bar and, green, and yellow bar, it starts in July and extends to February. And this uh, spawning season starts when the rainy period has, has already started. With this, uh, we can follow this with the, this line. So, <clears throat> and after that, we got the dry period in here. And we can see that the spawning capable fast and the actively spawning uh, are almost negligible. So we analyze the spawning fraction and we can see that this spawning fraction decreased from July to February. So we are going back to this uh, figure. And we can see now, we can observe that in the small and mid size, during the rainy period, during the dry period, the numbers of individuals in each mess size are cut in a lower, uh, uh, lower uh, quantity. While in the, during the rainy period, these arrows lost. During the rainy period, the, the numbers of individuals cut and retained in each mess size increase. And the higher increase we observe in the 100 millimeter mess size. Also, we analyze the mean length of the reproductive fast in relation to the mesh size, and we observe a significant variation in the larger mesh size. Well, this is because, uh, okay. But in the smaller mesh size, there is no significant variation. As we have seen before, in all mesh size, we catch all different reproductive fast. But now we can see that this, in the larger mesh size, this reproductive fast changes, and this mean length, there is a mean length variation between uh, the, develop, the, the reproductive fast. In this case, the variation is between developing fast, spawning capable, and actively spawning fast. But in a broader perspective, we can see that this mean length also increases with the mass size. As we have recommended, the use of 100 millimeter mesh size, we, can, we, we are going to see the impact of this mesh. So the impact of this uh, net is not only on large specimens, but also on reproductive fats. The impact is related to the length mesh relationship and also to the pattern of behavior of in the females in response to the environmental condition of the year. Therefore, <clears throat> Besides recommending the use of this net for the fishing operation, also we recommend it to use this regulation of the mesh size to switch, sorry, this regulation of the mesh size to a regulation of closed seasons, especially in July and August, where the spawning fraction is relatively high, as you can see in here. Note a part of this. Charts in 2005 indicate that older fish are usually also large. And for the time being, we assume that the pattern of behavior of serving in, in related to the, is related to the age of the fishes. Therefore, in larger mesh size, spawning capable and actively spawning fast catch in a larger mesh size were also the older fish of the lake. Okay, last analysis is the, the fecundity analysis, and we, we're going to see the, imp, the, the implication of use 75 or 100 millimeter mass size on the fecundity. So we analyze the potential fecundity, which is the number of uh, all size ready to be released in a current breeding season. And we analyze it, uh, we correlate it with the length of the fish. And we can see that there's a good correlation as the size of the fish increase, the potential fecundity increase. So this result is in line to what has been stated by Schwartz in 2005, again, that older fish are usually large and fecundity also increase exponentially with size. By integrating this analysis with the gillnet selectivity analysis, we can observe that the optimum site that was 
uh, in the smaller mesh size that was 26.8. And length at maturation is likely to fear both being caught and retained in a smaller mesh size. So if we go to this fecundity analysis, we can see that an individual of 27 has a low potential fecundity, lower than 5,000 X production in a current breeding season. So as we recommended, yes, I'm almost finished. As we recommended the 100 millimeter mesh size, we're going to see what happened with this. So therefore, to increase its fecundity, the allowable catch minimum size should be larger than that. So we recommended 100 millimeter mesh size. And the optimum size catch and retain it in this net is almost 36. And an individual of 36 have a potential fecundity a little higher, uh, almost 10,000 X in a current breeding season. So the performance analysis allow us to protect then the immature component of the stock, partially the mature component, and also we increase the potential fecundity of the species. So I just have one conclusion from my presentation, is that the reproductive studies of fishes give good support for the evaluation of the impact of fishing gear on the mature stock and are crucial for improving the fisheries management. Therefore, we recommend to integrate reproductive potential studies in the fisheries management of the stock, particularly in the small scale fisheries. Thanks. I acknowledge to all these people <laughs> the attention on the female stock of Rico Guatemalensis collected in the Nicaraguan lake where gillnets are widely scattered. So during my result presentation, I will discuss mainly on two aspects. One of the aspects is the impact of the gillnet selectivity, not only on the size range of the population, but considering the reproductive fast of the stock, uh, immature, immature component of the stock. And also, I will remark on some important considerations to be taken into account we're going to uh, kick off with a presentation by Aldo Hernandez Porto uh, Carrero, who is from yeah. Nicaragua and doing his PhD with uh, Fran. And the title of his talk is Integrating Reproductive Potential Studies in the Fisheries Management Study, uh, study Case of Females of, and I won't even attempt the species name. Thanks. <clears throat> uh, good morning. Uh, Okay, I will try to, to integrate reproductive potential studies in the fisheries. It's possible, it makes it possible to catch fish on a desirable size range because of the high selectivity of the net, of course. But also, we know that fish populations are heterogeneous in age, size, sex, pattern of behavior, habitat, and others. Hence, all their members are not equally vulnerable to any given method of fishing. Keeping in mind these three aspects, I will present this study with focused management. And I use a study case, uh, Bricon guatemalensis, which is a fresh water fish in habitat inland waters from Mexico to Panama. And in the Nicaraguan lake, is the second most important commercial species. So now I will, I will mention three aspects directly related to this study. One of the aspects is that in a small scale fisheries around the world, uh, uh, fishing gear is the most common used fishing gear for catching fish. And many regulations arise by combining gill net selectivities analysis and length at migration. So as a result, we protect the immature component of the stock. But gill net had been known to select fish on a narrow size range. And the regulation of the mesh size prevent to cut fish below that size range. So make 